All right. What's up, my friends? Welcome. Game four of the Pro Tour Finals. This is one of the best games I have ever seen. Uh, watch it live, of course. Christian Calcano from New York. Been a friend of mine for a long time. Loves seeing him in the finals here playing Tron against Jake Beardsley playing Rakdos Scam. Of course, the Pro Tour Finals are best of five. Uh, first two games, not sideboard. Remaining three games are sideboard. So right now, Calcano is currently down two games to one. And it's a must-win game for Calc. Uh, trophies on the table, you can see here, playing Tron. And um, okay, oh, it's a wild one. So we see turn one Relic for Calcano. And turn one Ragavan for Jake. Turn two, we see Calcano play a Besaju and a Map and a Tormod Crypt. So Crypt's interesting one, interesting card to bring in. Uh, a turn zero Crypt will stop them from scamming, which is very, very important in this matchup. Love bringing in the Crypt out of the card board. Because uh, you're never going to card for it because it's, it's worthless on turn four. But on turn zero, which is the most important turn, is very, very good. We got a map. Ragavan's a huge one here. Uh, applying pressure to uh, to Calcano and getting uh, some advantage going as well. But not dealing that much damage. So we have a pretty insane draw here, though, from Jake, right? This is a turn one Ragavan, turn two Blood Moon on the draw. But in basically, you couldn't ask for a better start from Scam, aside from just maybe, like, you know, uh, having an insane Grief Scam kind of thing. So huge start. Uh, advantage bar has to be pretty far in Jake's favor. Although the clock isn't great. So Calc plays a Tron land. And... Plays an O-Stone, which is obviously a way to answer the Blood Moon, but has no extra lands. Has a Ugin, a One Ring, and a map in hand. Has the map in play also, so it can go find a land that way. And not under enough pressure where, you, should, you know, you should be able to have time to find uh, the, f the five natural lands to pop, pop his O-Stone. And then Jake has almost no way to blow up an O-Stone in his deck. So we see a hard cast Grief here off the treasure, looking at the One Ring, the map, and Ugin. Uh, the Ring here probably going to be the, the choice for Jake. Because uh, obviously, if Calc draws a land, you get the ring going. Ring's a huge card against Scam. So, one card that allows you to kind of get your cards back and uh, kind of undo the damage that Grief and Thoughtseize can do. So, Jake thinking it out and planning it out. Jake has another Ragavan in hand and a Fable. So, not a very fast hand for Jake. Um, and then Calc, of course, at 16 life, has time to work with. And uh, Calc's list, a little different than the handshake list that dominated the tournament. Calc is not playing December in the deck because he has, he has Gigantha. Uh, and, of course, is playing four stars and four scryings like any, any normal person would. Um, so, here's the Grief. Adds to the clock. Takes the ring. Calc draws. And, again, this is mostly like, uh, can Calc draw land number four and five to pop his O-Stone before he dies, basically, kind of scenario. So, Calc draws a card. It's a sphere, which is not a land, obviously. And now he has to work out how he wants to try and navigate his way into finding the mana to pop this stone. So, can spend two for the, the map in play to find a land. Can find a forest if, if wants to. Uh, can find the Tron. Just try and have it before the, before the or after in the post-Blood Moon world once the uh, O-Stone is popped. Uh, I don't really need to find a forest here in particular. And the Sphere can make green also if a card is drawn. So I'm going to go for the Tron, which I like. Uh, can play the Urza's Mine. And then we see the map, a Sphere, and an Ugin in hand. Uh, Ugin not going to matter really until the Blood Moon has gone. And then map and sphere are more kind of cogs in the machine to kind of get things going here. So, plays a land, taps it, and thinks about what wants to happen here. So, I'm going to play the sphere. Again, drawing the land next turn is the most important thing. However, there's no way to map for the land. Not enough mana to do that. So, okay, I'm going to take a look here, which I like a lot, for green. I'm trying to find a stirring, which is huge. Makes the green and draws another copy of the One Ring. So not the worst, honestly. Again, the, the ring's really good. Uh, not the land we're looking for, but, you know, one of the next best things, probably. So, Jake untaps. Sends in for five. Cock down to 11. Top card's land. Not really worth it. It's a treasure. And then, not a very good hand for Jake here. You know, has two Ragavans and a Fable. Hibble can clean that up, obviously. So, here's a Fable. Here's a token. Now, seven power in play for Jake and 11 life for Calc. Calc untaps. Looking for that land. Nope. Another sphere. Kind of awkward. There aren't many actual lands in the Tron deck. It's like 18 usually or something like that. So drawing a land naturally is not as easy to do as it would be in other decks. So play the One Ring. So again, great draw for Calc as far as that goes. It, the damage will add up, obviously. But tap the draw. Looking for a land once again. Finds a Haywire Might. So awkward. You know, Calc just really has to make a land drop here. And then the... The real prize is that the 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 ring's also indestructible too, so it makes the the land draw for Ozone even better, which is great. Big raid from Nasif. What's up, Gabe? Hope you get home safe and uh, welcome. We're going for game number four here in the finals. It's an insane game. First with that follow button, obviously. Um, 
obviously, uh, you're all great. Gabe's great. So, why did Calc not play the map last turn off the sphere mana? So, he made that green mana looking for Stirrings. He missed and didn't play it. Um, that's a choice to make where you don't want to blow the map up with the O Stone if you do draw the land. So, if you do draw the land, you're forced to crack it, and then the, the map just gets destroyed. So, you know, you, Calc can just afford to wait to next turn and, like, play the map and, and just crack it and play the land drop that way. If he needs to land, and he, and he draws the land, he gets to keep the map for later, which is pretty cool as well. So, reasonable play from Calc, I think. Wonder why you didn't get seen on Gab's bluff? Listen, you gotta show it to me, right? You gotta, you gotta show it to me. I'm playing Reed Duke's deck. I'm not going nowhere. So, so we see uh, we see a Fable. We see discard both Ragavans for Jake, which is interesting because like the the dashed Ragavan seems very relevant in the post O Stone world. But Jake is looking for some gas. Jake's got five mana in play now. Uh, Thoughtseize, Feign Death, Fable, and Feign Death on the Grief can be very good in response to the O Stone. We see Calc draw draws another O Stone, unfortunately. So no land again. So poor calculator here. Uh, down to 10, off the ring. And Jake's got 7 power in play. And of course, the ring is dinging for 1 as well. So now, you know, if Jake can attack for 7, and Cal goes down to, to 3, then it's, you know, that's 2 off the ring, and the ring's kind of just sitting there. So, kind of tough. So we see Cal here. This is, this is probably the most complicated turn of the game. So let's, let's really take a look at this. So we see Cal's got a hand of O-Stone, Haywire Might, Map, Ugin, and a Sphere. Uh, the options of how to start this turn are you want to draw a card of some kind, right? So you can kind of get an idea of what you want to do. Could tap the ring for two and just try and draw the land. But again, with only 18 lands in the deck, the probability of that's not super great and it's risky because if it doesn't work, now the ring's on two, it's really hurting you. And there's no real defense to put up here. Um, we have a sphere also. Can sphere go for green, try and do that. Um, and then we have the two lands left over. But it's a tough turn because Calc is taking, looking to take a lot of damage here. So it goes to the sphere. Makes a green. Looking for a land. It's an Ancient Stirrings. So, now as Stirrings in hand, can cast a Stirrings off the green and almost assuredly find a land, hopefully. Uh, but the fear is, now what? So, now I have O-Stone a turn after, take seven damage, take another damage, go down to two, and now we're in a tough spot. So, Cox had a think here. Um, also has the Haywire Might, too. So, Cal could also just play the Haywire Might, use the green, blow up the Blood Moon, and then have Tron and have the mana from a tower, but not enough mana to actually do anything useful, right? So he would need to tap the power plant for one, play the Haywire Might, sack with the floating green, and have his four mana left over, which is also not enough to blow up the O-Stone, or honestly do much else either. So gonna tap the ring now. So Mist, gonna go for the ring with the green still floating, which I like, so if it lands drawn here, it's really good. Uh, if Calc draws any Tron land here, now you can make the same play I just said, but have it amount above the O-Stone also, which is huge. So, so we see draws are a Karn, the Great Creator, and an Ancient Stirrings. So not ideal, honestly, because the second Stirrings is pretty tough. Uh, only has one green anyway, and then the Karn's a little clunky as well. So, for folks asking about my PT record, I just did my recap uh, on stream. Uh, I went 10-6, and six, Q for Worlds, and the next two PTs. Uh, a video on that is going to be up on YouTube later today. I went, already went over all of it. Um, but um, did well. Q for Worlds. Very excited about it. Uh, look for that in a video uh, going up later today. So, cast the starting with the green floating. Looking for a land. Can't see the starting, unfortunately. And again, this is a really, really tight spot because Calc is facing down 7 damage at 10 with a ring on 2. So, Calc needs to not only deal with this Blood Moon, but just not freaking die. And again, this is where I think that Jake discarding the second Ragavan is a little interesting, you know? And But Jake also has the uh, the Feign Death, too. Uh, but the Dash Ragavan could have been, you know, enough damage when we sneak through at some point, too. But obviously, not very good given the board state. So, pretty interesting choices here on both sides. Uh, Cal taking a long time here because this is extremely, extremely complicated sequencing of, like, as far as what you want to do, what are you looking for, what are the outs, you know... What are Jake's outs if you hit your out as well? It's a lot to work on here. You know, Tron's, Tron's easy. Tron's a, Tron's a, Tron's easy. There you go. So, and then, and then Calc here also in these cyborg games is a little bit more of a dog here also. So we see the, the Stirrings finds a sphere. Uh, I, I couldn't see what the full Stirrings was, unfortunately, if it was a land or not, but uh, still no fifth land for Calc. And Calc has the Haywire Might. Uh, can make a green with the Sears. So now, if he hits the land now, he can Haywire Might at least. So, also by mine is a blocker too. So, makes a green, draws Urza's Mine. Oh, Finally finds the land. Oh 
So now Calc is a green floating and the mine untapped. So now you can play the Might. You can blow up the Blood Moon. Um, you can blow up the Fable if you wanted to. You know, you want to gain some life, make a blocker. You could also blow up his own ring as well uh, if we're concerned with the damage. So that would be plus four life, basically. Um, so deciding what to do. And then also, this O Stone is not going anywhere. Jake has zero shatter effects his entire deck. So the O Stone's going to pop next turn regardless of whether the, whether the, the uh, Blood Moon's in play or not. So Calc's got to think it through. The, the Might can block also and gain two life regardless, but going to go Exile the Ring, which I think is, you know, a gutsy, gutsy move by Calc here. Goes up to 12. Now the ring is gone. Calc recognizes him and he already has a ton of resources as well. And the O-Stone is the most important part and his light toll is the most important part. So, Reflection flips. We see a Fury drawn from Jake. Jake still has his Feign Death also, which is very, very scary uh, in response to the Blood Moon. I mean, the Blood Moon, sorry, the O-Stone uh, because he can re rethoughts these again. So, if, obviously, Jake attacks with Ragavan, hits the freaking uh, farce that Calc was looking for. We see a Thought Seize from Jake. Of course, the most important card is on the board in uh, Oblivion Stone. And we see a hand of O-Stone, Stirrings, Karn, Map, Ugin. So now, Jake knows, of course, this Blood Moon is gone next turn, right? So now the bigger cards are in play, so Karn and Ugin matter. Uh, and then, of course, the Map and the Stirrings. Map doesn't matter that much anymore. Stirrings can find another Boom Boom also, but it's not guaranteed. And the second O-Stone is a little insurance policy also. So we see here it takes the Karn. Writes it all down and uh, comes in for the attack. Calc's down to five. But five is not too bad, honestly. Five can survive a uh, a flickered grief off a of feign death. Calc could obviously bop the O Stone on Jake's turn as well. Uh, I think Calc will have to draw land here. Draw Sundering Titan instead. Good lord. Gigantism. And Jake has a bunch of mana too. There are four treasures in play as well. So. There are time constraints, but uh, the Pro Tour Top 8 is untimed. And especially in the finals, you're, you're given a lot of leeway. You know, this is the most high-pressure match that either of these players has ever played in their entire life. They're playing for $50,000, you know, eternal glory. Uh, so give it a little more leeway, obviously. Uh, you know, if this, was, if, this, if this was at, you know, round two or whatever, I think that Calc might have gotten a warning for that turn. Uh, but, you know, it's Pro Tour Finals. Don't want to see warnings happening for if you slow play at the Pro Tour Finals, you know. Let them play. So, Jake goes to, uh, to, to their turn. And we see uh, a lot of treasures here. So, Jake's got access to seven mana. So, Calc's going to fire off a crypt. Now, he's going to crypt himself. Why would you do that, you might ask yourself. Well, Karn gets cards out of exile. So, by crypting himself, he now has access to all the cards that he just exiled but from the crypt. Uh, to Karn, which is really, really cool. And then, also... Um, uh, yeah, so that's all available to him. Slight misplay on Calc's part here. Technically, Calc should have popped the O-Stone and then in response, Tormod scripted himself. So the O-Stone would also be in exile. Doesn't really matter that much though. There's already, already an O-Stone in there in his hand or whatever. So, so as we see in response here, Jake makes a copy of Grief with the, the Mirror Breaker Reflection. Gets another Thought Seize. And then we can see, you know, a slight mistake on Jake's side here also of not using a treasure that's going to die anyway. And this actually was the mistake that might cost Jake the match here. Uh, it's a huge, huge mistake uh, because Jake will not have enough mana to cast another Fable post-Oblivion Stone. So there's a, a few slight you know, things here, but it, I think it's really, really important to understand that it's so easy to armchair quarterback in spots like this, you know. But until you've sat in that seat, you know... Uh, these are both very, very little minute things. These are little, you know, little, little execution things, not overall grand strategy things, you know. And do they not matter? And they can, of course. Uh, you know, calc, calc, you know, that the O Stone should be in exile, whatever. Uh, but uh, Jake's mattered a little more, I think. We'll see. So we see, so we see Fane Death in response to the, uh, the O Stone. Everything dies, but the Grief, which will come back, and Thoughts, he's another card. And now we see the treasures go away also. Limiting Jake's mana. So, Jake knew the O-Stone was coming. Uh, should not have had to land there. She was treasure, obviously. So, two mana left over. The Grief comes in. Thought, the Thought Seize is away the, uh, the Ugin. Karn, I mean Karn. Uh, Tron is now uh, online again. And unfortunately, Jake's got a pass here. So, Jake's got a Fable, but Jake can't cast it because the mana was tapped. So, it was a 4-3 in play, though, with Menace and Calc's at 5. But now Calc is online. So, Calc's hand is Forest, Sundering Titans, Stirrings, and Matt. So, with access to... Uh, 10 mana total. Cal can go for a stirring here and see what turns up. 
We see a Karn, Warping Whale, Sylvan Scrying, Relic, and I missed the last one. Taking the Karn, obviously great. And um, now Calc mostly needs to not die, right? So now Calc is in the driver's seat of, at this moment. Uh, he weathered the storm. He was able to kind of get through, kill everything. And now at five life, just kind of needs to stay alive and get things uh, under control, get rid of this grief and so on and so forth. However, it's important to note that Jake has a lightning bolt in their hand. And that's the kind of card that was actually in Jake's sideboard. It was not in the main deck. It's not really a card, you know, you think about when you think of scam. Uh, so the, the kind of burnout plan is very, very real here. Possibly unbeknownst to Kalkana, right? So we see Karn go get a, get a bridge. We see the map played. So now it's a Titan in hand with one card in hand for bridge. So now Jake can no longer attack. Jake's hand is Lightning Bolt, Fury, and Fable. So... Jake's got to figure out, how do I steal this game? How do I win this game? Wants to look through the Exile cards. Again, very, very important that Calc exiled those cards with the format script because now they're all available for Karn as well as the sideboard too. So that Haywire might, uh, you know, anything that's in there that, that's possibly useful, Sphere or Star. Uh, so, uh, crazy, crazy turnaround here. Uh, now Calc with the advantage bar, you know, and um, Calc looking to stay alive, get things going. We see Catacombs is a draw for Jake. So Jake's hand is Catacombs, Bolt, Fury, Fable. Fury can take down the Karn uh, if necessary. Uh, and a pitch cast. Uh, and again, that Bolt. And then we get to see Pitch on the Fable. So Fable token can't attack anyway. So going to get rid of that Karn, which is a huge play, obviously, because the next thing Karn gets will probably be game over. See a, see a Catacomb play and say goes. Jake's got one card in hand, and it's a Lightning Bolt. And Calc's at five. Two Bolts available in Jake's deck. Other possible burn avenues are Bowmasters as well as Croxa. So the burnout is real, you know, and Calc, this is a point where you can easily kind of get, you're in the driver's seat, you're feeling good, kind of let your guard down a little bit, start playing big things, try and get the game over with, which is exactly what would allow Jake to steal a game here, uh, which would be huge, obviously, to win the Pro Tour with. So we see Calc. Calc's got uh, another Karn is the draw. So they're going to fire up the old Karn ski. Interesting because Karn, you know, adding cards to hand, a little awkward with the bridge. Uh, but we see your Calc Cyborg, you know, Leveler, already has a Titan. And some of these cards were boarded in, right? So Titan was just boarded in naturally. Torn Scrap was just boarded in naturally. You know, uh, with your Karn board, you can bring some things in to board some cards you don't really need, which is interesting. So, uh, so we see, uh, look at some graveyards, kind of check, check things out, doing some math. And now Calc's like, okay, I have weathered the storm. Now things will look a little better. We want that trophy on the table right there. What's going to stop me, from, stop me from winning here and forcing a game five? So, got to think about it a lot here. You know, possible options, you know, can, can minus Karn to get a lot ton of different things. Can go for a map. Um, you know, has Titan in hand also. Titan can come down and kill two of the lands, which is huge. We'll kill the forest too. Uh, but the problem, of course, is that on Calc's side, once the bridge is in play, these new, these Tron decks now, you know, they're playing, I think Calc had one copy of Karn Liberated and one copy of Ugin. With less Planeswalkers, the bridge has got to get removed. You know, Cal can't just play this Titan and start smashing in for seven. You know, so Cal goes to the board and pulls out a Walking Ballista. Okay, that's a path of victory, right? Ballista can just shoot for lethal. It can also shoot, shoot, shrink, and attack, and then grow after attacks with the Ensnaring Bridge also, which is kind of cool. It can kill the Grief. So Cal's got a plan, but it's going to take a while. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, very fast for this Ballista to win the game. Jake's at 15. Can't really attack that much. Uh, so... This game's going to go on for a while with Calc at this precarious life total of five. And again, we know there's a bolt in Jake's hand. Calc doesn't know that, but has to be acutely aware of it. So Jake draws a Croxa. Again, if we're talking about burnout plan here. Croxa does that, right? It's Calcano's goal to kind of empty his hand so his bridge will be safe and so on and so forth. And then Croxa comes down and makes a discard. And the person discards a land... They take three. So Croxa would be better as a lightning strike here, obviously, but it's close to a lightning strike. But again, not quite a lightning strike. So we have this bolt and hand guaranteed. Cal doesn't really know he's at two life right now. And then Jake has his Croxa, which might or might not be another bolt to win the game, uh, which is crazy. Cal's trying to, to kind of end the game, but, you know, and of course it's also nebulous from Jake's side, where if Cal has one card in hand, is it a land? You know, is it, a, is it a spell? What What is it? So we see Calc here fires up a Titan. Jake bins the lands, which is great. I love Jake holding this bolt here and hiding the information from Calc. 
and then Calx Hand is now a uh, sphere, I'm sorry, star, and not much else. Now, this is a really key point. Calx got, um, Calx got a map, I'm gonna fire up the map, and get a tower, and it'll have four mana left over, which is enough to pump the Ballista, or cast the star. Now, if Calx casts star, and draws a land, or plays the card that he draws, he's going to die to Croxa, and this game is going to be stolen from him, which is insane. Uh, so, really walking the edge of a knife here, but the important thing is that we as viewers, we know the Bolt's there, we know the Crox is there, we know Scam is not really a burn deck. This sort of like, you know, I'm gonna kill you out of nowhere thing doesn't happen very often in Scam. Scam wins by, you know, by miles, not inches typically. Uh, so, Calc plays the tower, has the star in hand, and this is a scary spot. If Calc plays his star, either A, leaves it in play, or B, cycles it, and casts a spell off it, or draws a land, the game's over. And again, we know that Calc doesn't. So, Calc thinks for a while. I think one of the benefit things here uh, for Calc is, of course, Calc has exactly four mana, which is one pump into Ballista, which is obviously exactly what you want for that, too. So, if he had five mana here, maybe he casts the star. You know, so he thinks for a while, has the Karn. Karn's gonna go up. No reason to add a card to hand just yet. Uh, and again, Crocs is also a really weird card too, because as, you know, Bolt's kind of an odd card to have post-board against Tronx. It doesn't, doesn't kill anything really, you know, it's just Lava Spike for the most part. Crocs is even weirder. You know, Tron has these main deck relics. Crocs is more of a grindy card. So like, Crocs is a card that you would think would not be in the deck post-board at all for Jake. So it's a card that, you know, it's a card for Calc things. Like, boom, end step, Lightning Bolt. So Jake deciding that uh, they want the option to go for it where they can just fire off Crocs and see what happens. It fires the bolt, Calc down to two, and Calc also needs to be careful about the Ballista on the Grief, uh, because if the, the Grief gets scammed here, it can take the card out of hand and then go for lethal as well. So it goes for the kill and the upkeep, love it a lot. So I uh, can't draw Fane Death. And now Jake's got two cards in hand. He draws a Bowmasters. That's another point. More burn spells. So again, now you can see, you can see Jake. This game has been a freaking seesaw. Where it was going really, it was going really good for Jake. Calc squirmed his way out, played really well, but now Calc's in this kind of like pillow fort sort of situation where he's ahead, he's got a bunch of mana in play, but he's only at two, and Jake has. So Jake goes for it, fires at the Croxa, Calc's card, not a land. See Calc laughing here. I, I don't, you know, I don't even know if Calc realized how close to dead he was there, right? So discards the star, now empty-handed. Crox is in the bin. And uh, again, Bowmaster's in hand for Jake. She's looking for that extra point or two. And Jake's got time. Jake's at nine. And there's not a lot that can happen here. So we see a Haywire Might. That's huge from Calc. And then Calc fires up the Might and goes to the bridge. So huge in... I should just lethal, actually. So never mind. All right, sure. So uh, it's actually just lethal. So huge in its life game, but it's also lethal. But a crazy, crazy, crazy finish. Um, you can see Calc here just like... You can see the kind of relief on his face. He's very, very happy that he won. But you can also see how close he knows he came to losing the Pro Tour in that exact moment, which is crazy too. So, uh, yeah. So, draws the Haywire Might, which again, looked good from a, oh, I can gain light perspective, but actually it's just a kill there too. Just kill your own bridge and go for it for lethal, which is great. Uh, so, an absolutely awesome game. Uh, conclusion, spoiler alert, uh, Jake does take down game uh, game five in somewhat anticlimactic fashion. Uh, so, Jake, congrats to be winning the Pro Tour, obviously. Cal, congrats on second place. And, uh, but a crazy, crazy game. So hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. And uh, just a wild one. Just a wild one. Thanks for watching.